Hello, welcome back to Adobe Live Party, people. Happy Tuesday. Yeah. We are back for day two with Julian Crespo. My name is Alexis Bustos. Together, we are the dynamic duo straight <laughs> out of both Oakland and Austin, Texas. Wow. Yep. Really, we're really representing here. Uh, welcome back, guys. It's day two of Julian Crespo. How are you doing, Julian? I'm great. You're just ready to uh, to rock and roll, but um, you know, also just uh, just appreciate everybody that has like reached out after yesterday's broadcast and uh, connected with me. It was just really cool to um, uh, you know reignite uh, my uh, I guess my networking ability. <laughs> I kind of took yes. took a little break from networking and I'm kind of like back in it. So it feels kind of good good to do that. Oh, nice. Well, welcome back everybody who's joining us from yesterday. Welcome back anybody who's brand new. Um, we're designing a an app with Julian Crespo. What we're doing is really just understanding process. And we're talking right. process here all around UX and interaction design. We're happy to have you all back. Hello, Voodoo Val. Good to see you. Voodoo's back. Mara, Stoney, Wade. Let us know you're hanging out. Where are you in the world? We're all all, all over the place. Um, but yeah, it's going to be great. We have a, you know, after the stream, we, uh, we're kicking off this week with Brandon Gross doing the daily creative challenges after 2 p.m. after this stream. Uh, yesterday was the intro, kind of that first day. Today you're doing another challenge. Those are hard. So mad props to Brandon for, for doing, taking on the DCC this week. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, later today we'll be fun. checking out a uh, yeah, pretty dope artist. And again, if you check out the chat, there's a tab right above that says artist spotlight. Make sure to recommend an artist that you want to like have a showcase during these streams. So we'll be checking out We'll be checking out a, an awesome artist in the, later on in the stream. But without without further ado, let's talk more about you, Julian Crespo. Can you give us right. a little intro on who you are and what we're working on today in this day two? We, let's do it, yeah. So cool. I wanted to just kind of quickly recap with, with what I'm doing. Um, but before I do that, let me jump into, uh, let's see here. Oh. Yes, I'll give you a little recap presentation. So in case you uh, missed yesterday or want to be reminded, I'm Julian Crespo. This is my handle at most places other than LinkedIn, which you can find me, Julian Crespo. Uh, I urge you to connect and uh, let's let's become uh, acquainted somewhere in some way. Um, really like still kind of buzzing after yesterday's uh, uh, broadcast. So it's just really cool to be back. Um, so reach out to me. It would be, it'd be awesome to connect. Uh, that was not the screen. Of course. Oh, that's why. Boom. Okay, so I just wanted to recap uh, a little bit about my journey. So, so I am an LA native. Um, I was in mortgage for a long time. I uh, had a career panic, and then I started working at Apple uh, because I needed to ch change it up. Just selling phones and activating things and talking to crazy people and all that kind of stuff. Uh, customer service is amazing. Uh, I worked at a tech startup uh, that I created uh, and it didn't go anywhere, so I stopped and then I had a baby. Uh, and then I didn't know what to do with my failed adventures in, in the tech world, so then I went to design school uh, and enrolled in CCA. And now uh, I'm here with Alexis, who also went to CCA with me. Uh, I had an internship at Collective Health, which was uh, my first taste of what it's like to be a product designer. And then I graduated and then I started working at Adobe for a little bit for um, this XD accelerator program that I was assisting with uh, building plugins. Uh, my plugin was uh, Ally, it was a uh, accessibility plugin. And uh, so that, that's uh, my journey. And then now I am actually, uh, I'll, I'll get to where I'm at now in a second. Um, so my product approach, this is uh, just kind of central to the way that I mm. feel I I kind of fit in with uh, the, the product adventure is um, UX design is is definitely the big part, uh, but research is equal in, in all phases. Um, when Whenever you're able to, to uh, look into uh, and research the problem, talking to people um, up front before you uh, find what the problem might be, but also mm -hmm. during what, when you're trying to solve the problem to just make sure that you are, uh, you know, not just trying to make a new problem. Uh, and visual design, it's, it's integral. And so uh, I kind of try to, to fit all the, these uh, spectrums of design um, and also, also understanding technology. We kind of have to understand uh, any kind of new uh, advancements in technology. Interface design is, uh, is, is very, very up to the mercy of the technology that it's on. So 
uh, car, whether it's cars, whether it's, uh, um, you know, HoloLens, uh, AR, all that kind of stuff is, is needs to be considered if you are going to be working on uh, potentially designing an interface for it or some sort of experience for it. But at the center, mm. always keep it human, right? Um, yes. That's, that's the, 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 the biggest part of what we do is making sure that uh, humans are at the center. And uh, instead of designing uh, for people, we want to design with people. So we have to integrate uh, people that are experiencing what it is we're trying to solve with those people instead of having them on the outside looking in. Um, and so the approach is, is a double diamond. Uh, you might have seen this if you're studying design. If you haven't seen this, then I recommend you kind of just take this in for, for what it is. Uh, so it's really a divergence, a convergence, a divergence, a convergence. Um, so you do that at the beginning of the process. And this isn't like equilateral. So sometimes the, the uh, discovery definition phase is shorter. Sometimes it's a little longer. It just depends on the project that you're on. Um, when we approach these, uh, this is this is what the formula that we use at all times. And sometimes uh, this is what we try to follow. But mm. this is usually what happens. Uh, and, and it's okay, right? As long as we are trying to follow the same metric of, uh, you know, divergence, convergence, learning, regrouping, sharing, researching, and just kind of looping it all in, uh, you know, that's, that's, this is the reality of design. Um, and it's sometimes is a mess, but that's what we do is we try to make a sense out of that mess. Right. Alexis. Mm, bravo. I need all of these as my background on my computer. <laughs> And uh, so currently I am a, a designer at STAR. Uh, we are a global agency and uh, we operate out of uh, San Francisco. I'm actually remote. I work in uh, Austin, Texas, and uh, it's it's kind of maybe because of the pandemic. I don't know. Um, I probably wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for that, uh, but I am. And we have offices in, uh, in, in Kiev and we have offices in uh, Poland and we have offices in Japan and China. Uh, we are a truly a global company and uh, I can't wait till uh, the world opens back up so we can actually explore the globe and uh, work with fine companies from around the world. So if you're interested in some sort of uh, possibility with uh, working with us, uh, reach out to me. Okay, so that is uh, a little short intro into me. Uh, let's talk about what we did yesterday. So I briefly showed you what it's like to use a plugin called, uh, let's see, what it was it called? Whiteboard, I believe. Whiteboard, I believe. Yes, yeah, whiteboard. whiteboard. So we used Whiteboard to, um, and I'm looking at this because I have another screen over here. So if I uh, am looking over there and you're wondering why, that's that's why. Um, so we just dra dragged over or um, clicked and opened up a, a mind map. And we kind of just modified it a little bit to fit what we needed to do. Um, and we, we were discovering what it is to um, be a film enthusiast and, and try to develop your film. So. Uh, a connected service for film enthusiasts and local and national film developers and professionals. Uh, that is what we're trying, who we're trying to solve for. So we do have an audience uh, and we do have uh, uh, an intention and, and some sort of uh, uh, product that we're trying to define here. Um, so we know that there's lots of film types, there's lots of development types, um, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, and if anybody in the chat is remembers or is interested, would like to know uh, if you have any questions about yesterday, what we did, um, chime in, feel free to uh, ask me questions starting at any time you want. Um, so we know the pain points are, you know, it could get expensive. Uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a long wait time. Uh, remote film processing is something that uh, is not as centralized and uh, easy to connect with. Like, you know we have uber eats and we have doordash for all this food aggregation and uh it's kind of like borrowing that philosophy but applying it to just film and being super niche with our intention and what we're trying to solve so what we did yesterday was we we attempted um to do this uh in a way to uh kind of show people like what it is to be just messy with the wireframes because um you know a lot of times when you're given a, a, a this bulk kind of work that you need to do, you flesh out concepts and you build these user flows and diagrams, and then you understand what the UI components uh, or the, what the wireframes could be. Um, mm -hmm. Those usually start sometimes in hand-drawn sketches, which mine did. Um, so I translated uh, these sketches that I did really, really quickly into this. And the goal that I wanted to do with this project, uh, with this live session, mm -hmm. uh, was not to just like 
super labor over it. And and I and mm. I I say that because not because I have like a, a, a nine to five job that I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> that's 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 also part of it, but also really challenge yourself to create constraints with your time. Mm. And if you give yourself uh, X number of hours to do something, try to do it in that number of time. And sometimes deadlines are the motivator, right? Well, and yeah. I and definitely we, agree with that. Yeah. Right? It's like, I mean, you, like anybody can spend, uh, you know, a week on a screen or yeah. whatever and making things perfect, but that's not the, that's not real life design. Right. And so our design, uh, uh, our design leader, um, uh, Mikhail, he's, he's an amazing designer. He actually asked me, uh, like my interview and he's like, so when do you know a design is done? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, that my answer was like in, in the real, in, in the real world, like there's a deadline, right? And you right. have you have to meet that deadline. But in in reality, in my mind, this the mm -hmm. design is never done, right? Mm. Because we would love to always iterate, and that's and that's what happens if you don't give yourself a time limit. Is is you you just kind of keep iterating and keep iterating, or you can potentially keep iterating. Um, but you also want to show these things to people, and that's what I'm doing here. I guess I'm showing it to you. So this the was my first has spoken. <laughs> sure. Uh, not, not much, not much of a guru. Sometimes I pretend to be one. Um, so, so we have, a uh, we have a few things to show here. Um, so what the logic was behind this is, um, we have a home screen and this is going to be like the, the primary experience you get into when you uh, open the app. Uh, and it's kind of like a, like a way to drive some interest that you might not have seen. So nearby offers, uh, and maybe you can shop by services that are kind of highlighted here. Uh, we have, uh, then you kind of drill into uh, shopping by uh, by by filtering, and that is navigated through um, through here. So I would go from here to here, and or in, I click here and I can go here. If I go here, I can go to like here. So there's like there there's these ways that I can navigate this app. I'm kind of forming this story right now, and um, so when I'm on this filtering page, which is clicking this actually this to this, uh, then I'm able to uh have this shopping experience uh for this location that i didn't know previously about that now i'm about to engage with um, and this is the core of this idea is uh to to bring awareness to smaller shops who are um, in the film development world the films processing world um, maybe one day they can all kind of join into this uh, uh this platform to then just kind of be a a place a hub uh, for, for film enthusiasts. Um, so then you would go through the simplified form uh, to, to, cause I don't know if, uh, maybe I could pull one up. I don't know if it's maybe not, a, I don't know if it's not kosher to call people out other than, I'm not gonna do that. But there's forms that you can go on most like film mm -hmm. development websites and it's literally a PDF. And it's like, you are just supposed to look at it. It's not interactive. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you're supposed to actually fill it out, print it, fill it out and mail it, and then you get your stuff back. So there are ways wow. to do this, right? You can at any point in time now, pick up your computer and get your, your rolls of film developed. It's mm -hmm. just a little bit more analog. And so what we're trying to do is make it digital for these folks. All right, so uh, we did and this that. This can be applied to not just, not just the film industry, right? There right. are these niche, niche types of, um, uh, you know, places where, where technology really hasn't gotten to be a focus and any type of like user experience hasn't been a focus for totally. them and places yeah. that are more on analog, places that are more mom and pop, you know, well, restaurants, I'm, we've seen a surge I'm and hundred percent all agree. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking that, um, that was like the idea for this is like, I didn't know which service to, to center it around. So I just chose film. Uh, yeah. Any kind of older service that you think of like laundromats, like, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there, there's a lot of, there's companies that have like, um, you know, cool modern apps that are centered around a laundromat service. But it's like, what if we can give those older um, mom and pop small, small business, a platform that can compete with those guys that are, you know, in the tech and they're tech startups essentially right they're yeah. masquerading as laundromats um so it's it's really uh, in my frame of mind um all companies in the future will be tech companies right 
And mm, it, it's, it's, it's just, it. if we, if we are able to harness these, these digital uh, tools uh, in the future, um, maybe that can happen one day. Cause if you think of a company like Home Depot, uh, they're a tech company, whether they, do you think they're, they're a home improvement store or not? There's they a have, tech sector of that company they, now. Exactly. Yeah. They have technology, they have curbside pickup, they have uh, all these things that you're, you're expecting um, Apple to have, you know? And so, uh, I think it's a really exciting uh, uh, thought experiment that this is because it's um, empowering small business with digital tools. And, and that's something that I feel is missing from, uh, you know, DoorDash is the only thing I feel like that can provide it. But that's just based on people's need to eat. Yeah. We all love eating and we need to eat. We've definitely seen a surge in that with the last year for sure. But I really love that. I really love the concept and the idea that we're talking about this, like really allowing all forms of business to have a say and an arm in this type of this new economy, which is only flourished in the past yep. year. Right. So yeah, great, Julian. Awesome so stuff. I am doing something crazy um, and I'm showing you a process <laughs> and, and this is accelerated. So I'm doing this to just kind of give you a sense. So this is, these are kind of like the inspirations for um, what I'm looking for out of this product. I'm actually going to just kind of copy some of this stuff because I, it's it's a short timeline and uh, this is in reality really good practice. Um, I'm not going to release this on like uh, uh, any sort of platform to try to make money. So uh, it's a practice. So I would encourage you uh, if you have any any uh, uh, like you know doubt in terms of like how to design something. Yeah. Just look at what people are doing and imitate it. And uh, and and for your practice, I think it's really a good idea. Um, but if you use those patterns uh, for real outside of this. Uh, that's where it can become problematic and you run into like the plagiary problem, right? Uh, so we'll look at these and we'll, we'll design some stuff uh, based on these uh, aesthetics. I really, I really like the Nike experience. I think that they uh, have nailed down a really good um, simplified uh, color palette. They actually just use black and white. So I think I'm going to do something similar. Um, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to do a little crazy on color. Uh, I am admittedly not the best person at deciding what color should be. I'm like, Sure. Use that color. color you weren't at the color theory class in that. I took school. I took color theory. I just it, the choosing the color it's is thick. not really my jam. So, um, but okay. having That's said that, totally here's something colorful. So this is uh this is my portfolio. <laughs> um, I I encourage you to like maybe take a look at it. So like I just want to show you like uh, briefly like what you would think like a, a portfolio can look like. Um, this was a student project actually. This is what I did when I was in school. Um, and so like, just kind of show you like, you know, you have your highlighted experiences, uh, your onboarding, this was like a block, this was like, if what if block, what if uh, voting was on blockchain, which I think should be in reality. Um, so you have uh, like all your key screens, you put your process like these are really great to have if you have the time uh, to experience maps really detail out what's going on. These can also evolve over time as artifacts in your uh, uh, process. Uh, you want to, you know, have your wireframes connected all mop and, 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 you know, make them look pretty yeah. if you want to. They could be really you know, beautiful be, case study. They could be pretty a great case too. study. And we're going to do something like this, like a really rough and dirty um, uh, style guide. Uh, we're going to we're going to do something like that. Um, and if you have time, uh, I, you know, I, I learned how to do some 3D modeling. So I kind of mocked up some stuff for this project, but it wasn't wasn't essential. Some branding elements. Uh, one of my uh, uh, good friends and colleague, uh, um, uh, or one of our good friends, uh, Joanne, actually d designed that, which is really cool. Um, research, obviously, uh, and this is like an, a video. Uh, it's really great to if you can explain, put explainer videos behind your work. It's just a really cool uh, way to do that. So I'm ready to jump into uh, designing some stuff. So let's do go it. ahead. We don't have let's a ton of time it. because we have uh, other stuff to look Ooh. at today. So we're starting with the UI kit first. That's a little oh, bit yeah. different. You want to explain? With, with what I'm doing, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, totally. So we are on day two, which is essentially, we're applying a visual language to basically this idea that Julian is fleshing out. Like, And this isn't a final in any way. Mm. Um, and we were kind of talking earlier about, about what makes a design final. Um, you know, it's definitely, we're not there. <laughs> but right now we're gonna be kind of designing from reverse. So usually what happens is you start creating a wireframe. Maybe you walk into um, learning that you are using reusing components over and over again. Maybe you're wireframing, you're realizing actually I, I make a have a card for 
I use a card for um, the, uh, each business I showcase, or actually the same, I'm using the same type of size of photo throughout my design. And that's coming back and coming back. I'm using this color a lot. And that's how you kind of know that that's your, gonna be your baseline for your uh, your style guide. Something that reoccurs in your design. So what Julian's gonna do is gonna be fun. It's gonna it's gonna be the inverse. He's gonna kind of pick pick probably a quick style guide for him to be able to utilize over and over again in his designs. Um, that's right. Someone in the someone in the chat, you're talking about uh, uh, choosing colors. You know, there are so many. And Julian, you do not need to be the expert at choosing colors because there are so many resources. One yeah. quick Adobe plug is, I believe it's called Color Adobe. Um, yeah, we'll which check is it out. Adobe Color, and it's an all. I mean, uh, if someone could throw that in the chat, it's a great resource through Adobe. Um, and I'm pretty sure you can save your. Basically, it's 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 picking your picking colors for you. Oh, you're going to go. Nice. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you can save into existing um, libraries directly from this, um, this tool. As long as you're signed in. Great, great tool. Plenty of, plenty of color picker tools out there. Um, for sure. I'm thinking really yellow. Right I'm now. thinking yellow. I really want yellow. You're vibing with yellow. I'm vibing with yellow. Like gold, yellow, like a gold or like a, like a bright. Like fun. this one. Oh, yeah. I don't know, um, but yeah, yeah. That that's a good that's a good call out. I, I might even just use one color, so we'll see. Um, yeah. Black and white, black, white, and yellow. Usually, are... when you start, right, you do like maybe two sets of monochromatic colors, and maybe one one bright color for your CTA, um, mm -hmm. maybe a larger color. Um, yeah, so... and the other thing I'm going to do is um, just to save time, is uh, is go through uh, uh, some some of these like illustrations from Adobe stock. Um, the the fine folks at Adobe were uh, able to hook me up with some credit. So I got some uh, some shopping I can do. So that'll be nice. cool. And we'll come to that. And uh, when we're looking at some of our product tiles, um, I'll just grab some of these and put them in and see how they look. Um, Very cool. Okay, so the the, the categories that I wanted to find um, are, are color palette, uh, typography, my iconography, and my UI elements. So um, I'm going to be drawing out some iconography, um, and I'll show you how to quickly do that um, using you know existing uh, icons that we've seen that maybe I couldn't find the right match for all of them. So right. I have a list of icons I want to do. Hopefully, I can get them all done. Um, okay, so let's do let's do the uh, the typography. So I'm going to do this one as uh, inter bold is going to be my uh, and it's going to be how many pixels is this actually? Hold on one second. Let me look at something. Let's see, it's just a visually organizing it. So like, uh, I'm just gonna actually just copy this. Why not? Because this is mine. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have a. You can have a guide, right? Just to, to to remember what you're what you're trying to do here. Definitely. Uh, so this one I'm gonna do uh, 20, 34, 34 points, 34 pixel. Uh, and. I'm going to do is make this add to character style. So what that does is now I have uh, inter here, character style. So I know that um, I can refer to that later when I need to, uh, you know, make sure that my sizings are accurate. Um, I'm going to copy this. Actually, hold on. Uh, I'm not going to put what it's for. Actually, I can. This is like. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not going to go like H1, H2, H3, because I'm not going to have that many. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not going to create a whole, uh, a whole like, you know, list of, uh, of all every, every state of uh, font. So I'm just going to call mm -hmm. it title. Um, I'm going to reduce this to 12 and, or 24. And this is obviously it doesn't need to be beautiful because this is just my, uh, my, my, my uh, guide. Yeah, you're doing so. a quick a quick guide to help you start yeah. wireframing. And once you build these out, you know they go very start building out wireframes fairly quick, right? Because you're just reusing reusing components. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is going to be uh, what did I say? Twenty four. So I'm going to do twenty four. See how this works here. So then I, I get this back, and I'm going to do add character style. So now I have two, right? Um, I can I can even name it uh, if I if I wanted to I can rename these um, so I could call this title mm -hmm. and then I can call this uh, a subtitle 
I so do way- love, I do love the document assets. I do love being able to just like save everything. You know, yeah. essentially you're working, you're creating a mini version of your, your style guide, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And yeah. something a lot more accessible to use. That's right. Yeah. While you're doing that, Julian, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say hi to anyone who's just joined us. Welcome to the stream. We're with Julian Crespo, the UX designer in Austin, Texas. Um, right now we're creating a very niche app, app for, um, for businesses. And uh, right now we're doing some UI kits. And anybody, anybody joining from YouTube, please, please come on over to Behance. We got a party going on in Behance. You can check out some more of Julian's work um, as it's linked in the, in the description. And uh, we would just love to see you. So yeah, we're here, day two, day two, when you can actually see his, uh, Julian's been on the stream a bunch, so. I've been here, yeah. You'll you'll see, you've probably seen his face a bunch already in that thumbnail. So (laughs) welcome, welcome. Yeah, I haven't changed, I I realize I haven't changed my my profile (laughs) picture in a minute, so I should probably uh, get some new headshots. Well, not work, work. I I am like uh, kind of a pseudo photographer, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know my, uh, it's funny, the uh, seeing seeing headshots for designers versus headshots for any other type of career. The designer ones are a lot more like, hey, look at me, I'm a creative. We're like fun, <laughs> easy going. <laughs> you ever notice that? The headshots for designers are so fun compared to like. I mean, it's real you know? though, right? Like, yeah. that's, that's kind of like how, how I feel like it's, it's kind of like, you're not, you're allowed to not be so professional. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I so. remember the first time, like my mom saw my, my profile, my headshot or LinkedIn. She's like, that's, that's, that's what you're going to go with. <laughs> like, yeah. She's like, you know, are you sure that's professional enough? She's like, right. No, that's, you're like, that's what, that's what we're going to go for. Actually. You got to so be like, a little more loose. <laughs> you're, you're like, so what? I'm not allowed to like show that I'm happy in my uh, photos. <laughs> exactly. That's that's very the boomer to millennial age this gap there. Weird. Okay, it's something's not working right for me. Maybe you can help me with this. Reveal yeah. color. So this is a new. I'm doing a new one. New one. Let's do it. And if I want to make this a new style, it's saying reveal. Oh, why is it saying missing font? Hmm. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So let's let's just get through this. This is a something that it was not expected to malfunction on me. Enter regular. I'm gonna maybe forego character styles. Uh, for yeah. some reason, mine is uh, bugging at me. So I'm gonna go. This one is 17. Mm-hmm. All right. And um, typically, typically, you when you're doing a wireframe, do you just work with like three, three different styles? Uh, three different styles of what? Typo- with, with your typography. Oh, sometimes I just use one. Um, and Ooh. that's just because um, I, I mean, it depends on it depends on the aesthetic that I'm going for. Um, yeah. Because for me, it's not as like, you know, I want, I, I really like using uh, like a sans serif uh, for, for things that are a little bit more modern and a serif mm-hmm. for little things that are more classic. And sometimes you like to merge those, uh, mm-hmm. but it depends on the identity you're going for. Uh, for this one, I was actually going to use a, uh, like a, a monotype, um, but it, it just kind of didn't look right when I was doing some like experiments. So I just kind of went with something like this. Um, weird, 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 weird. Yeah, so this is regular. Very cool. John in the chat asks, hello, new, hello, hello right back at you. New to UX UI, could you define what a wireframe is used for? Oh yeah, Great sure. question for right now. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's actually, um, a wireframe is a skeleton, right? Um, it's a skeleton of, of the experience that you're doing in a, in a rapid form uh, to give yourself um, enough freedom to change it, to not get locked into it. Cause one, what happens is once you start locking in your, uh, your design before you've kind of like, when you start visualizing it, it's really hard right. to back away from that style. Um, and, and that's, and that's the kind of, um, that's what we're trying to avoid actually is, is really with that first wireframe is 
is not get locked into uh, an aesthetic. Don't, don't get locked into a, a feel. Um, is, is you just kind of want to be able to uh, be iterative. Yeah. So I'd that's agree. kind of that's kind of what I feel. What do you what do you think? What's your definition? Yeah, I would say uh, wireframe. Yeah, I like skeleton. That makes it feel more like like we're making a body. But um, <laughs> I think it's more of a blueprint. Like that's the way I see it. Um, right. You got to lay the plans for the house before you can put up the walls and paint or paint on. Right. So, so a wireframe is a great way to do that. Oh, we got Mikola in the chat. Oh, up? hey, buddy. All right, cool. Um, I, we, we saw him earlier, so it's really good to see him again here. So I was I was also re rethinking these icons that I that I did yesterday. Um, home shop, like I think the shop and the cart are kind of redundant, so we might not need that. I'm going to move profile to the top. Um, so let's let's just let's just use these as guides. Um, I'm actually really liking Nike's icons. So like I said, uh, if you're ever going to um, like do something for your like to learn yep. copy from copy from the bests right and so that's what that's exactly what we're going to do right now except we're going to do um we're going to do this um on a grid so you guys can know uh more or less like how to use a grid actually let's back out of this yeah that's great so, so like right when we think about um like what kind of grid uh we want to do for pixels um i'm going to do a 20 pixel grid right or so 20 Let's go this. Actually, I'm going to do an artboard. Uh, artboard, 20 pixels. And I hope you're enjoying the music, actually. I always get jealous again that I don't have music in my ear. I know. Like, I, I know. feel like it's there's, hard. there's something wrong. So Something uh, very chill, though, happening behind <laughs> you. Just think chill. You know, think you chill. know exactly what it sounds like. Some chill pop. All right, so I'm going to put up a grid. Instead of layout, I'm going to go uh, square, and I'm going to go 20, and I have a uh, I literally have a, um, this one, let's see. Yeah, that's great. Square layout, maybe square. It's oh, uh, invisible. Not to interrupt your flow, we have some questions around, uh, really great questions around, uh, I think I really like this one around people, creatives you admire. Uh, Jessica's asking in the chat, do you have any creatives you admire? Just that's off the top of your head. That's a good question. Um, Great question. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. Um, hmm, so, what 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 kind of? All right. So, where are we going with like creative? Like, is it someone oh. who's a designer? Um, someone who's uh, maybe a uh, illustrator? What do you think? I think creatives is well, that word is up to your interpretation. That's true. Maybe a designer, Jessica. Is that what you mean? But I, I mean. I mean, I think you take inspiration from everywhere, right? So yeah, I that's I where that's where I'm game. at. Yeah, I'm like take inspiration from anywhere you can. Uh, man, I'm on the spot here, and I, I feel like <laughs> I should just say like, you know what? Yeah, one a creative I I appreciate is Mikola, uh, <laughs> uh, one of my one of my our, our cohorts here. Um, yeah, I think I think I I have I have a lot of creative friends, but like I don't know. This is really you're hard inspired. To you're inspired by people you work with. I love that. I am. Yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> I'm blanking on that. I am. No, it's Name, all good. It's all good. Names. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to leave anybody out either. All right. So I, I'm going to show you something that I'm doing here. So I'm on a 20 pixel grid. I might need to shortcut some of these uh, ideas that I'm having because they might take too long. Um, but when you're doing a uh, any sort of uh, any sort of iconography. Uh, you want to make sure that you're actually designing within. See how this is uh, not within this area here, like in this square, or else you're going to be off, right? So the trick is to actually get this this point, and and maybe maybe like your the place where you design isn't uh, Adobe XD. Maybe you actually do this in Illustrator. It just you know any vector tool that you use, um, they're going to have some sort of uh, grid that you're going to use and you want to go a little bit um, you don't want to go you have to go half pixel if you're doing one line pixel uh, icons uh, so so that means that you have to take this this pixel and you have to go to 19.5 and so this is pretty laborious so um, that's why designing what I said yesterday designing pixels is an art it really is because you want to mm -hmm. get all of those one for one so here's here's the thing that I'm going to do 
And uh, this is not going to be a popular decision, but we don't have much time today because uh, I want to design all this stuff is we are going to use these as our as our guide and we're not going to do pixel perfect because uh, pixel perfect is going to take too long. All right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go over these guys and I'm just going to go bam. Uh, all right. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. I know a couple of designers that swear by making your own iconography, even if it's just, maybe if it's not even the final one you're going to use, because there are, we're really overlapping the work right now from UX to UI, right? Mm -hmm. So there are some elements of UI that some UX designers really shine in. And so definitely I know you have a you know big taste for visual design and that bridges into UI design versus strictly UX. Look at that. Um, See that? It's pretty close. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's close. not exact. Yeah. That's what I want. I think it's then, important to just do it and not like, and you know, and then, not worry about it. Eventually, down the line, if this was a larger project, you would have you would hand this over and you would have visual designers design the yep. essential sketches of That's these what I love. iconography. I love it when I have like a, a great visual designer that could just like take it over and like yeah. just hop in there. Because my yeah. I I like I like the UX part. I like thinking about um, the yeah. bigger. The bigger picture of the problem and, and how the, the behavior is. I talked about that yesterday. Um, I'm doing actually one and a half um, pixel icons. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's and that's for me like my favorite part is is really defining um, some of the experiences instead of like you know designing the visuals. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy visual design. It just it does take a little bit more time, um, and it's something that um, you know sometimes you might not have the time for like right now Absolutely. i'm just gonna i'm just gonna because i couldn't so for the life of me i couldn't find a pack that met all of my needs and mm. and i was just like you know what like you gotta make you make your own you just gotta yeah, make it, it work we'll make it work i think we're really yeah so i'm gonna take all these and so the trick is like the the language that i want to use is rounded uh rounded corners uh, maybe those are a little big, but I really like this icon that that Nike uses because it it conveys uh, like a browsing experience. Yeah. So, because I don't actually think that cart uh, experience is or the cart icon is the right one. Yeah. Um, so that would I'm actually be a this. really fun like stream in general, just like picking apart and because um, a lot of iconography we've done this before where we've had to figure out what the metaphors are for a lot of yeah. these. For, yep. for, for them, all the symbology around like the tool and what you're trying to express the user, right? Like that mm -hmm. thumb, that thumbs up didn't come out of nowhere. You know, that was thought through. So yep. that'd be a really fun thing to just kind of like sit down and do. Um, and that's a whole stream in itself is literally oh, like picking icons? through and trying to understand icons and not even just designing them, just understanding what that metaphor is, right? Is it a search glass with the constant lines? Is it a heart? What does a heart imply versus a star? You know, right. like it's so fascinating. That's a good point. Um, the work That's a really there. Good point. So it's, it's pretty fun to kind of go. It's fun to get into the depths of it. So I'm glad we're kind of doing that for a little bit on your stream. Yeah, it's definitely and, something that that's worth looking at. And this one, Are you want to make a heart from this box? You know, I, I I was going to, but man, this is going to be. What happened? Actually, it didn't. Let me round the corners. Oh, it's because I. You know what? That's why. I have to do actually a square. This and now I can round corners somehow. Yeah. So well, I just want to again like just say hi to everybody in the chat. Um, let us know if you want to. You have any questions for Julian? He is a breath of knowledge. He has a wealth of knowledge. He's a breath of fresh air. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just want to remind everyone at two today. You know, Brandon Gross will be doing the Daily Creative Challenge for XB. I don't know if you've seen uh, one of Brandon's streams, Julian. Um, dope yeah, setup. dude, his setup he's is got, insane. He's got the best setup. So I'm excited for anybody who's doing the Daily Creative Challenge because that's just, I think he's like, he's like always in the cool. Isn't he like usually, anyways, you guys got to check out his stream. I'm like um, amazed at his setup, to be honest. Like, I know, he's a true, I'm like, true streamer. Dude. There's some people that are just, he is, a, he is dedicated to the to the craft. Oh, He's yeah. seriously dedicated to the craft, and I love it. Um, yeah. And uh, well, for, be... for me, like that is like I strive to have a background uh, as as elaborate as his, uh, because that's just it was just insane. I'm like love it. I know. 
I know it's definitely an art now after a year of everybody streaming in some form or another. Um, so that's so that'll be later for uh, DCC. Uh, we will not be going through any challenges, obviously, because it just started. But we will be spotlighting an artist who I actually saw pop up pop up in the chat. If you're still here, Laura, we'll let we you know let us know if you're still hanging out with us because we are going to be spotlighting you. Or oh. later on in the stream. It's gonna so be the, awesome. The spotlight is here? Yes, I just saw I just saw her name pop That's up. Awesome. So we'll see. We'll see. Um and if anybody has anybody that they know artist wise that they want to give time to on these live streams, because that's what we love to do, right? Just level up designers, level up each other, be there for each other. Please let us know there is a tab up top in on top of the chat. If you're watching on Behance, if you're watching on YouTube. Come on over so you can, you know, request an artist. Maybe it's yourself. I don't know. Like, we'll keep it on the DL there. Um, but that'll be later on as well. So, uh, again, we're with Julian Crespo, UX designer, uh, representing from Austin, Texas. How does it feel saying uh, uh, I'm a designer from Austin, Texas? It feels kind of weird because um, I didn't, I didn't expect to 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 be ever uh, someone that would live in Texas. Um, you know, I grew up in California, and when you think of uh, of, of Texas, you you, you know, you, I actually thought like, oh, a desert, and it's not. Oh, yeah. It's not a desert. It's not at all a desert. It's uh, um, actually yeah. very um, tropical in terms of like the weather. So I was really kind of caught off guard by that, but in in a really good way because like when it comes down to it, like this place is pretty great, um, and I'm really really lucky to to be here. So with that said, you know, it's it's one of those things like perceptions you got to kind of sometimes yeah. just throw them out the window um because there th it really is really a, a special place and great people so far that i've met um just really happy to be here um and i don't know it's and it's, you know part of the whole reason why we moved here was just kind of like there's a tech uh component to to austin right and we have a, a, a lot of great food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was always I talked to, the, to to Alexis about this a lot. Is um, when we, uh, you know, when we think about like where we want to live, like it has to have like good food, um, <laughs> and that's just mm -hmm. like that's oh, just yeah. the reality, right? It's important. You need good food. Maybe you're, maybe you're spoiled because you're from California. I don't know, but like it's just I, part of it. I think that's probably Beauty. that's probably some of it. Like there's definitely like uh, you know some some bouge definitely bougie i'm a little bougie um that's okay i think everyone's allowed to be bougie we're a little bougie it's okay it's okay to indulge in that a little bit um speaking of bougie this has nothing to do with bougie um jessica has asked again about books so this oh. she asked earlier and i wanted to kind of keep you on the flow there but any books recommended for beginners to ux and ui design i know i have a couple but do you have any off the top of your head you know, this is another stumping um, of books on the top of my head. I, I actually really like, um, I bought this systems book. Um, uh, I'll have to come back to you on this. Um, but one of the, one of the yeah. books I recently, I recently I can, read. I can throw some out. Yeah, please do. Uh -huh. Actually, I, I, I'm drawing a blank because I'm like designing at the same time. You're guys like, okay, no, it's all good. That's why I'm here. Well, one book I know that you've read that I've read together, because we both went to our formal design education at the same institution, was a book called Intertwingled. Did you ever read that? Intertwingled I, that uh, that? by by um by Peter Morville. Peter Morville. Oh, must get. Yes, definitely must a must read. Amazing. Um I, I So I think that's more of a U UX type of book versus a UI type of book, right? Yeah. Because right. I guess you, it's, you want to and, talk about okay. it? Okay. Um, the inner twingled. Yeah. Um, Do you remember? Yeah. It? Yeah. It was, I don't it want was, to put you on the spot. Either. It was a systems. It was a systems book, uh, and I can't remember uh, all mm -hmm. all of the details about it. <laughs> it's I did all good. It, this is totally fine. Inner twingled is a great book if you want to understand what, how to how to make a, how to make sense of a lot of different system coming together it's written by an author uh, his name is peter morville and he's definitely a thought leader around um system designing so i would say there's a lot of books around design design as a whole like so many books written about design and i always thought it was funny when books are 
I always thought design books were kind of like a counter. You can't read about design. You kind of do design, right? So I always was like, can't read about design. Yeah. Um, but there's so many amazing books for like inspiration and and all of that around UX design and and um, design of everyday things. Obviously, is a big one around yeah, just like I design in general and, and interface. Yeah. That one comes up a lot. That's a classic. Um, That's a, that one comes up all the time. So there's uh, essentials like design of everyday things. Hooked is all everyone's into hooked right now. Oh, it's yeah, about, yeah. Um, Na, habit forming. Na, Na, um, what's his name? Niall. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Um, there's another one that yeah, I remember. I'm sure we'll get, I'm sure someone will throw it into the chat. How to, uh, how to, how to make a, um, how to make sense of, of, uh, a how to make sense how of messes. How to make sense of the mess. By Abby Covert. Yeah. Um, that one was yes. really good. Um, so there are books around specifically around design that I think that are beautiful and and help with understanding your process and design work. But um, one of the one of the pieces of work that I mean I like thrived when I read Intertwingled. It just kind of helped me understand how things are connected because that's essentially what you as a UX designer, if that's your chosen field and you're going into it, or maybe you stayed there for a while, you're essentially that's your job is making sense of a big problem and understanding the layers of application and what you do when you make those decisions. So That's right. yeah, I won't, I won't throw out. Yeah. Everybody knows the, the, if you, if you Google user, you know, UX books, UI books that, you know, a lot of the same books come up and those are awesome. But one that doesn't get enough praise is a uh, intertwined mold. So I'm going to throw that one out. You know, the, I had a, I mean, I had a list of, of the books that I, I can oh, actually, yeah. there's so many great lists out there. So there is a book that I'm that I'm reading right now, um, and it's so Homo Sapiens actually is one of my favorite books. It, it, it's it's not about design, but it is. It's about humanity. Um, there's another book that I'm reading right now called uh, Think Again by um, Adam Grant, and it's basically how to understand what, um, like how you uh, uh, understand what you don't know. Yeah. Um, and and the idea of it is like the the key to uh, to the key to being um, someone who is uh, like not subjective thinking and more just like uh, being able to to like shape what you believe based on um, not using your unconscious bias and, and, and not yeah. using not using like your preconceived notions of the world. Um, yes. That's kind of that's kind of like what this book's about. Um, so I, I I really I really appreciate like uh, trying to understand like how can I unlearn what I know. Um, because you know we get so uh, wrapped up in, in what we think reality is. Yes. Um, so yes, that's what that book yes. is about. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I love the idea of unlearning. Right, so much around design that like as you as you get more into the the field of design and in creative spaces, it's so much a skill you need to pick up is adaptability. But mm -hmm. it's not just adaptability. It's it's being able to let go. It's being able to really lose your ego around what you're creating and let it go and and unlearn because things happen and change so, so rapidly from design tools yep. to um, design systems to um, interaction patterns. So and and just in general, you know, not even in a, on a larger scale with um, industry. I'm talking like even just how your work is shown. That's that's exactly it. And um, yeah, you know, so. The books books you can never read enough books um there's another one that i that i read is um uh how to change your mind um and, and again i i probably here's the thing for me I, I really don't read a lot of design books like i try to what yeah. i do is like i read books about like human behavior um and then um there's always nested elements of design within all these books so um you know the ones from o'reilly are all amazing they're really really great books um but for me i, I tend to uh, lean towards like more um uh you know history uh and like history of like psychology that's yeah, why I, I, I like science uh I'm, I'm drawing a blank on his name near ayal is that his name who wrote yeah uh, hooked? Uh, hooked yes right uh, so um he's he's someone that i appreciate um all right so i have some stuff happening nice. here i don't know if you've noticed um we've so, noticed yeah um, I'm making um, some components here. So I'm going to make this a button. Um, so make component. And so when I have this component, um, it's going to it's going to allow me to uh, to use it later. And I could if I change it, I can change it and all that stuff. Um, this is going to be a radio. 
Um, so I'm going to have, uh, what's that, what size is that? 26? We might be able to change it later, but if we change it later, we could, we can always uh, have, um, cool. uh, I shouldn't make 20. So what's cool about when you do components is you could do component states. Um, yeah, so I'm going to nice. change, change this to a component, make component. And then, um, you have this here, component main, and then I'm going to add a new state and I'm going to call this selected. I could spell and that's going to change um, my ability to just say hide hide that uh, and then now I have two states right so um, we're not going to prototype it yet we're just going to leave it like that so I have uh, my button I have my radio I have mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do a uh, so I was and, and these aren't just pulling out of the air right these are like looking at this design and thinking like, what are the, did an inventory of the things I need, um, yep. right? So I have I have this, I have um, these guys okay. going. So, nice. so my next thing I gotta do is this segment control idea, like scans, prints. I'm just gonna create that real quick. Uh, I'm gonna use um, the smaller font through here. So this is gonna be um, s s uh, segment, segment one. And so, yeah, the, what, what I'm doing here is not typically what you do. So, you know, talking about all this process um, is uh, kind of going out the window, <laughs> so to speak, because like we really just uh, don't have time to, to, to do all the process because the process really is a process. It, it takes time. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're shortcutting it. And what I'm doing as a, as a way to, um, to circumnavigate is... Oh, I'm I'm doing a, a a design system before I put it into my visual design. You're giving um, yourself a little bit of a. a it, it's good for um, you know no, I I would I would I would say it's a very Adobe Adobe Live system you're creating right now. Something to help you do your your visual your visual yeah. stream along the way. You're just being very open and honest about it with the rest with the, with showing us your process. Um, you know, I challenge anybody else to do a two hour stream and it is, it ain't easy. Oh, it ain't easy. So you're doing great, Julian. Don't judge me. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. It, it's one of those things where it's also like, what is, what is the process? You know, you, you showed us one of a slide earlier that was like, you know, the double diamond shape and yeah. you know, like the reality of it isn't, isn't that. So I think this is your, your, um, you're showcasing what you're, what you're teaching at the same time. Yeah, that's it. Is, so, is, yeah, is not yeah. Uh, there's and also like process is 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 very personal. Right? People have their own it ways is. of doing things, and I think the nature of how we design is changing because now that we have collaborative uh, systems, um, you can't you can't be uh, uh, too caught off guard by um, uh, by having someone else look at your designs, that's right? True. Like you know because that's the true, thing true. is like when we're in uh this field um classically what happens is uh you know we try to hold things close to our chest um but you know what now we're kind of entering this new world where uh, we have uh anybody can look into your file so if you have a product manager that is just like breathing down your neck guess what they have a new way to look at what you're doing so it kind of is a a, a very very a uh, new way of thinking um, and designing with an yeah. audience at, at any time. Someone can go peek in your file at midnight. Just yeah, anybody anybody could have an Adobe Live, just silent Adobe Live watching your teammates create stuff. Okay, so um, if you could see, I'm creating like a little um, little bit of a, a variation between these two. So they have a selected state and a secondary state. Um, it's just a quick and easy way to do it. So another one I had is a chip. Um, so maybe I should title these so you guys can. Eh, never mind. Never mind. You You're good. No, so this one's going to be a chip. Um, so I'm going to detach this uh, from from the component, and I'm going to make a new component out of it. But it's going to follow similar principles uh, with a smaller font size. And this is going to go. Um, so this is something that I actually want to just like touch on real quick. This button. Mm -hmm. This button, um, 17 font size, 20 height. So 20 height is a good height for your button. And then you want to have uh, eight pixels on top, eight pixels on bottom. Um, and the the width is a little off. We want to do um, 
I'm not, I don't know, the system is not going to be perfect, uh, but we want to do like 15 by 15 or 16 by 16. So add two more. So the width on this is going to be 38. Oh, wait, sorry. The width on this is going to be 86. So the perfect button, if you want to build, is going to have 16 pixels on each side, eight pixels top and bottom, 20 in uh, 20 pixel uh, uh, line height for your uh, for your font. Okay, so that's a that's a quality button right there. If you wanted to if you wanted to round this all the way, that's an Apple button, right? That's yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's what Apple uh, HIG guidelines are. So we're going to do a chip. So this is going to be a 15 uh, pixel font. And it's detached from the original uh, component. I'm just going to center it. Oop. Okay, and I'm going to make this. Uh, I'm going to reduce the size of this. Um, and let's see what do I got. Nine, eight, 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 six, four, four. I'm go four pixels. And eight. It's a very um, Julian Crespo stream I've ever seen one. Trying. This is just, this is this is as real as it gets with them, with designing buttons. Yeah, it's uh, it real for us. It's a, it's really is a, 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 a just patience. It takes patience. Oh, I did set four. You called it, you're saying you're creating a chip, so can you go into that? Oh yeah, so a chip is kind of like um, a tag, I guess you you can you can compare it to a um, a, a filter. Uh, so it's not quite a button. It's um, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a a tag. I would say you could do these rectangle, you could do them circle. Uh, it really just depends on what you what you feel like uh, is the right shape. Um, mm. But yeah, they're 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 pretty they're pretty standard uh you might not i actually they could be called badges too i think i'm not sure um, yeah badges i like chip um yeah, a chip. essentially there's still a way to filter and then we have search um so i'm going to just take this real quick and i'm going to ungroup and then just delete these and so my search is going to be let's see how are we going to do this? I'm going to do it on this side. And then when you click it, um, something else happens. So let's see. So make this a component. Command K is a shortcut. Um, and then so what I'm going to do is the default is new state. Uh, let's see. No, I'm not. Hmm. Let's just leave it in a field to start. So I'm going to put it in a field. So I'm going to. That's one thing I have to do next is form fields. Mm -hmm. Actually, the core component of this app is form, is a form. Well, so uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to do that eventually. Uh, I'm gonna do a round form field and I'm gonna make it uh, the same height as, um, button. I'm not sure, let's see. Let me give you a, a time check as well, Julian. We're almost at we're almost at 1 p.m. Pacific, so that means we have about, you know, 15 minutes left of the full stream. Um, you, again, we you, have an artist spotlight in the middle of that, so. Are you trying to tell me to hurry up? I'm just kidding. <laughs> just giving you a time check, and I'm also wanting to say hi to anybody who's just joined us. We have some people joining. Uh, Uma Korn, I'm so sorry if I butchered that. Uh, you're following, following along while having dinner, so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, delicious. What are you having for dinner? <laughs> love that. Um, <laughs> I love that. That's like this is what you watch for dinner. I watch like. Netflix. Hey, I'm you know man, I'm dry on content. I've been I was searching last night for something to watch. I'm like I don't know what the heck to watch. <laughs> Just watching live. I love that. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, maybe I'll get there. Re I can't rewatch Friends the fiftieth time. Right. Um, so yeah. Here's, so hi everyone. So here's the other thing I'm gonna do. Um, 
I'm going to quickly, and I know there's there's people have many ways to do this. You can use the grid in here, um, but I'm just going to give myself uh, this now. Actually, um, I'm going to create my my um, my padding, and I'm going to do. I'm using the the uh, eight pixel grid, so this means this is going to be a six pixel uh, uh, row here. Um, so I'm just going to make it red, and then take the opacity to like uh, I don't know, ten. Um, so I'm just making sure that these are going to be consistent. Um, so there's 16 pixels, uh, and then this one's gonna be maybe eight. And I'm gonna go to the bottom. And the reason I'm doing this now um, is to kind of like not, not mean to sidetrack, side um, is I wanna do, do these buttons, and I are these, some of these buttons are gonna go full width, and I just wanna make sure the distance is, uh, is accurate. Yeah. Um, so I don't think it's sidetrack at all. I think it's just process. It's exactly what we're looking for. True that. All right. So, so if I do this and I say, uh, this is my component. Yeah, component. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a copy here just so you can see. And this guy is my main because we don't use the word master anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Agree. Answers here. One point five. Keep it consistent. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this. Oh, why are you not coming with me? All right. Oh. There you go. That's the width I need. So if I go back here. This one's going to be the same, right? Yep. That's so, the beauty of components. Yeah, beauty of components. I love it. Um, so the reason why I'm doing that is I want to do a, a state change. Um, and so what that means is that I want this to be some sort of interaction. I'm building an interaction into this button. So when I click it, there are two states to it. So this is uh, my new state. But my first state is actually just going to be the uh, the search glass. This mm. is my first state, right? And then mm -hmm. when I click mm -hmm. it, something else will happen. So state two is going to actually be uh, this. And state one, go back to it actually. So there's a cool animation that mm. happens. Um, I'm going to make it like this. And so that means that when I go to state two, uh, changed it, it overrides it. And that's, that's normal. All right. Um, but now I forgot the size. Hold on. Did I delete the other one? <laughs> oh man. All right. Whatever. Let me just do it here. Oh, yeah, uh, so if I have. Uh, what? Let's do some math here. Um, 390 minus uh, 32. So 358. That should be a class. That should definitely be a class. Is the <laughs> math needed? Math needed for artboards. Artboard math. Artboard There's math. There's another idea for a stream. I just came up with two different. On this stream, we came up with two other ideas for uh, streams or podcasts. One is about iconography getting into the minutia and the second one is all about uh, math artboard math and did you know that you could do math in your um in your watch let me show you so if i had this um and if i want actually this is a good example um if you're ever interested in like what is the next size down from from my main font um and this is what 34 so mm -hmm. if you want to think about the next font down subtitle you divide it by so I'm mean, right here. You can see yeah, 34 there you go. divided by one point. Nope. Actually, I need to detach that. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, divide that by one point six one eight. One point six one eight is the golden ratio uh, calculation. So like that would be yes. the best. So then I sometimes I just round up twenty four, and so then I get my subtitle. Um, but if you want to just stay true to it, you could just see 21 is my um, next font down from that. So that's, that's another trick. 
two using the classes, gold, using two the classes golden you ratio. Can teach. But yeah, you can you can use math in the browser. So you can or in, use in math the field. actually in the width box in the actual field. Yes. So uh, that, Leo Leo gave us a Leo. We we see you and we did it. Um, dude, in the spotlight on uh, Damien saying you blew his mind with the spotlight search of the calculator. No idea. Oh, no one yeah. knew that you didn't know you could do that. Well, Damon didn't know, but that's okay. Dang. We all learn. I, I love I'm that. I'm telling you, I think math as a design as math, like could be a total, like a total, like class, I guess it could be not, we could be, you know, something that we all need to learn, but does it get, does it get explicitly taught anywhere? Yeah. I guess you pick it up along the way, pick tricks and tips. That could be a formal subject. Okay. Um, so I got search. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, search doc. Oh, doc. Let's do doc. Um, I'm not going to include the user icon, but I'm going to include these. So this needs to be uh, the same. The same width. The 358 is the is the, is the size. So 358. And Leo, I'm glad. I'm glad you feel seen. We're here. We're here to see you. You're seen. Not only do You're we seen. see you, we understand you. We're here for you. Yes, we're vibing yes. out. Just like we know you guys can hear the music and we can't. You're here for us. You're bringing us the vibes as well. Uh, speaking of vibes, we have about 23 minutes until the artist spotlight. And then we'll come right back to Julian and, and we'll see what he's. We'll keep going on his designs. So. It's a little time, a little more of a time check, more formal time check for you, Julian. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, I, I introduced favorite, uh, introduced favorite um, as an icon because um, I just, I just feel like uh, it, it would be really great to like, be able to like have a collection of places you like. Um, I don't know. I was thinking like, you know, if you if you have a store, you always like to go back to the place. You know, stay stay true to, um, to like the people that you that support you. So like you know, you go back to places you like, and that's just the way that we operate. So favorites mm -hmm. is going to accomplish that for us with this. Favorites concept. is important. Yes, as a feature, favorites is such a strong feature for so many different apps. Yeah, you I, guys. That... Oh my gosh, Julian! I just found out they can't hear music right now. Mm -hmm. That is a big yeah. We just. They're letting us know there's no music today, or maybe it's low. That's a, that's a, that's a outcry. Well, you gotta, it's not okay. Hey. It's in our head. It's, it's low. low, it's, it's subtle. Just low. It's just low, it's subtle. It's a subtle beat. Because you want to hear us. We, when I work, I listen to music way too loud. Do you? Yeah. What do you normally listen to when you work? Um, so, if anyone's interested, I always I always uh, uh, put this out there. Um, I don't usually get any traction on it, and that's okay. I, I don't feel I don't feel unseen. Um, but my Spotify at Hidden Jewels, uh, you'd be able to see all of the playlists, and I, I am very diligent about creating playlists. Um, sometimes that don't have any words, um, so that's an important part. I think is you mm -hmm. wanna you wanna make sure that um, that. If, if it depends like so i also have to read to music i don't know if <laughs> i know that's really weird um but i have to read to music or else i'll like literally get tired and fall asleep um, yeah. and so what i do is i have playlists that are literally like no words and um it's just kind of uh the vibe you know that's that's kind of uh that's that's the vibe there's no words but hip-hop um, I have Ooh. I have I have a few different playlists in there. Um, if you're interested in browsing around, um, that are um, more hip hop uh, centered uh, playlists. Um, but I also really like electronic music, so um, that's 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 usually that's usually the vibe. Actually, is is uh, electronic music. Love okay, it. so I got a little doc there, you right? Look at your little drop in, shadow. Yeah, a little drop shadow there. Okay, going, okay. going with it. Dialing it up. Make that a component. Just done. That's done. Uh, so I got button segments. Oh, I need form fields. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to cheat and steal from myself. I think that's, uh, I don't think that's cheating. I think that's totally allowed. Yeah, that's fine, right? Yeah. So so these are like form fields that I had made before. They're a little fuzzy. 
um, that they're going to look like that. And, and I don't know if I'm going to do a selected state or anything like that. Um, I might not even do any drop downs just to show you like the content in general is fine. Um, but you definitely need to have, uh, this might go full width too. Um, maybe not, I'm not sure. 358 is what I said, right? 358. And what we can, the cool thing is, is we can also, um, when it's a component, it's easy to, 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 to change. So. For sure. And you guys are going to see, like, once, once this, once Julian's completed all of these different UI elements, essentially, and I think you're almost at, you're at point now. I'm almost have, there. Almost have everything. You guys are like, wild. You're just going to, it's going to come together very quickly people, because you, you remember we, yesterday we did the wireframes, right? People are, people are like, this looks like the worst way to work. And uh, I wouldn't <laughs> it's disagree. One way to work. <laughs> it's one way a, to work. It's definitely a way to work. <laughs> It's, it's working in some uh, form. Um, but you've already created the wireframes. What we want to do is detail them a little bit more with a like a, a more refined version of that wireframe, so like a little bit better under more stylized blueprint, if you will. So once that once he hits those elements, once those are done, it's gonna like it's gonna happen fast. So I would be like, just like hold on, hold on to your chairs. It's about to get crazy. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be um, so I also want to just like follow up. Um, uh, these icons by all means are not perfect. This is actually kind of bothering me. Um, I was gonna make that a little smaller. Um, so what I wanted to do is show you just some spacing things I'm doing. So um, I'm sticking to this rule of, uh, I'm trying to, this is somehow got away from me. Um, because these are a little bigger. I gotta, I gotta fix these. They're, they're annoying me. Height twenty, height twenty. So this should be um, sixteen, sixteen. Uh, let's see, thirty-six. Should be eight. Eight. Let me follow my own rules here, or else I'm gonna like, drive myself crazy. Mm. So this isn't necessarily pixel perfect. It's just being able, being a little bit more um, intentional about space. Sure. Uh, and following this like eight pixel uh, uh, rule. So I have Yeah, are you speaking about um, the space between icons right now or right? Right? Yeah, I can see there's a little they're a little bit off. So eight, 32, 32. I think it's I mean, they're not they're not perfect icons. So that's why they kind of look a little weird. But it's not bad, and so the but the spacing is is accurate, right? So I have these are all twenty pixel high um, for the most part, right? And then um, eight pixels on top, thirty two pixels on the side. This is following the same sixteen and eight, so everything's divisible by eight and four. Um, this one is a little different, uh, but it is it's twenty pixels high, so we'll see how that looks, and I might need to change that um, between these elements. Let's see what it is. 16, right? So this is the same. This is going to be uh, 16 pixels from the side. Uh, and then you want to this. is key here. This is, if anything, if you're going to take anything away from this, from Julian, it's going to be stay consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Consistent. Is it? Because how does it, how does it help you in the long run, Julian, if you want to talk about that? It just, it just makes, uh, uh, it makes your, your design a lot more um, just attractive. In general, cohesive. Um, cohesive, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, oh, there's another little icon that I need to make. Um, it's more of just like not necessarily iconography, but it's more of an element. A carrot, right? A little, little carrot guy. Um, so we're gonna do that out of a line. Um, and I, I don't know. Maybe oh, I'll just cool. do a triangle. I don't mm -hmm. know. What do you think? Yeah, let's do a triangle. Let's do this. Little drop down. Little carrot. And love when we assign food names to UI elements. Yeah, burgers, kebabs. Burgers, kebabs. You know kebabs, yeah. right? Kebabs oh, yeah. are those dots. The, the dots, dots in the line. Um, I have some questions over from the chat that uh, we just need to, we should cycle through some of them. Felipe asked a little while ago, do you guys code as well? No. <laughs> Resounding. No. Resounding no uh, on that no. one. That yeah, no. Much. Not interested. It's a different, it's a different no. type of a different field of work. Now, I'm not going to say that like I'm not interested, and I haven't, I have tried. Um, sure. 
Sure, I've we've all dabbled. Tried. I've dabbled until my brain stopped working. And then I'm just like, hey, this ain't for me. And it's okay. I'm okay with that. I've accepted, yeah. I've accepted this. And okay. um, it's something that I've come to, to, to terms with. Um, so yeah, uh, no, I don't code, but I, I do my web, my website that I showed earlier, juliancrespo.com is, um, is made in Webflow. Um, and, and so I actually, I actually used XD to design it, but then I, uh, I translated all the designs into Webflow. Um, yeah. so that's something that, that, that I think is, is a fair thing to do. Um, you can do that. You can use WYSIWYGs and don't, don't feel like that's not the same, like, you know. Well, Webflow is also a great, a great WYSIWYG to kind of get you an intro into into what maybe like front end engineers might need from you later on, right? It's a good like right. entry point understanding that's still fairly design focused, design language focused versus starting, starting to code from scratch. Mm -hmm. So there, and you know, if you, there are, I think Anima is the name of the plugin. Uh, yeah, Anima is- Design an, development plugin. Yeah, and if so you- there so are that means, a lot. Mm -hmm. If you use like like really really good layer names, that's all you need, um, and, yeah. and everything is everything is layered right, everything is put together, built right. Um, that's really all you need, and yeah. uh, you're good to go. Um, yeah, I, I totally uh, feel like WYSIWYGs are, are completely acceptable for us designers to use. But if you're able to do it, be like, I think if you're interested in still being a designer but also coding, I would highly recommend. Uh, looking into design systems. Um, because if you're able to then translate your designs into React components um, and help your team in that way where um, your things are just ready to ship, basically you're doing what I'm doing. You're building a, a, a puzzles, but they're actually puzzle pieces that you actually, that actually work um, in code environments. So yeah. uh, that's something that really, really is, is a powerful tool. Um, yeah. So design systems, if you're able to code, that that's the future. Um, it's now actually. I mean, yeah. It it's an important element. It's an important piece to being a UX designer and being not just not just a visual designer or a UI designer. Being a being UX designer, maybe it doesn't require the knowledge, vast knowledge of coding. It's but it's still very important to understand that when you create something, it, you're not when you create something like in a in a design tool like XD, mm -hmm. it's not fully done yet in our minds as UX designers until it's in someone's hands being used. And as amazing as XD is, you know, it's still just design software and there's prototypes you can showcase to people, but for it to work and get into people's hands, you need a, you need a, you need someone to code that for you. You need to, yeah. or you need to know yourself. So understanding what though that next step is, at least understanding it to a degree, I think is super powerful. Yep. Um, what so, what does handoff look like? You know, if you're a junior designer, that's something to kind of start to look into more. You know, maybe you haven't had a great, haven't been able to get an experience with a team that's kind of pushing through um, a final design to be developed or created, and that's okay. But you know, what are some of the tools people are using? What are some of the ways that happens? That's something to start trying to understand and look into because that's that's key in, in building. Mm -hmm. Desk asked what's a WYSIWYG. What you see is Great what question. you get. Yeah. What you see is what, what you get. What and it's, you it's a. What you see is what you get. It's a. Uh, it's, it's, it's like WYSIWYG. Yeah. It's weird. Um, it's, but it's, it's, it's a real thing. Um, there's like Webflow. Uh, there's a uh, um, ready mag. That's another one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's uh, a bunch. What's the, what's the other, what the really old, like the older one that people will use? Um, I can't WordPress, believe. WordPress, WordPress is like the OG, right? WordPress is OG. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many ways to kind of create your, I mean, that's a great, it's a great intro for a lot of designers to get into code is doing their own portfolio. There's a lot of these great portfolio sites, but, um, okay. So you yeah. know what I'm doing? What here? are you making a little, a what little am can? I doing here? I am making a logo. Um, oh, wow. We're doing I it. Oh, we're doing it. We're saying F it and let's do it. Do it live. Making a logo. Making a logo live. Do it live. So, wait, is this the Illustrator stream? Not I know. Sure. You know, I was gonna, I was just gonna open Illustrator and do it, but you know what? I haven't used. I'm not gonna front. I haven't used Illustrator in so long that 
I'm so rusty with it. And it's just like kind of a shame. Um, but at the same time, maybe I should, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't really uh, draw too well with uh, these tools either. Um, Amazing. So next. It's a little off right there, right? It's weird. I'm assuming your logo is going to be a film canister. Maybe? Yeah, it is. Let me see. Okay. Maybe square is going to work better. Okay. We're at about, let's see, we got about, you know, under 10 minutes till we start doing the artist spotlight. Oh, we still again, got plenty, any, we're still gonna... plenty of time. Plenty of time for you, Julian. Uh, yeah, but again, if anybody's new to the stream, definitely, definitely try to nominate an artist that you think needs to be spotlighted. Spotlit? Under the spotlight. Spotlit. spotlit. Spot lit. Um, there is a tab right above the chat. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I'm really excited for today's. Um, and you too can be spotlit. Being seen on Adobe Live, as seen on Adobe Live. That's all. That, that's all it says in, in Julian's um, bio on LinkedIn. As what? seen on, as seen on Adobe Live. That's what you should have. That's what it says. I think it's what you should. Maybe your Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. As seen on Adobe Live. That should be my handle. As seen on the Adobe Live. Um, let's see, this isn't working well. Okay. My pixels aren't lining up, but let's just jerry rig it and we would see the vision of what I would be creating here. So this is gonna be uh, how do I do that it? down? Let me just pull down that pixel. You know what? It doesn't work. It. work. it doesn't work because it's not a yeah. shape. It's a, uh, it's a square or it's not, a, it's not a, so let me do this. I really want to do this because I have this idea and I know I could do it. So I'm going to open. Wow. There we go. We're doing it. I'm doing Illustrator. So like when you draw pixels, like that's for me, like doing it in, in the design tool sometimes isn't the best place, even though it can totally do it. Uh, you have, you have full um, ability to do that. Um, I'm just going to do it really quickly in Illustrator because that's where I learned. Right, like yeah. I, I, I didn't know how to use anything before I learned how to use Illustrator. Um, that was my first tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to make it um, uh, 20, 20 by 30. Yeah, I think we all we've all learned. Uh, we've all come into Adobe from different using different tools, right? The yep. very the classic is everybody kind of fall into fell into Photoshop one, one way or another. Yeah, back I mean, that, in the day, back that's when where, it was the main. So that's where I started. And this is, I mean, I, I've said this before, maybe on the stream, maybe not, I'm not sure. But um, uh, my the person who taught me how to use Illustrator was uh, Howard Pinsky. Um, oh. And it's good, because he was, he was like the OG at like- He was the OG. Um, he know, is doing, still, he's still OG. Doing the broadcasts on, um, on YouTube before anybody really was doing it. Um, yeah. So he kind of did, uh, like give me like the 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 confidence to like start you know doing stuff in uh in illustrator so props to pinsky uh still doing his thing with adobe uh xd and just killing it at all at all fronts i know um, right i had you know i had lunch with him uh when i was there at adobe Ooh. and you know i've actually um uh, been a guest with him as well um yeah for, yeah for he's hosted for, me i've hosted him we all have hosted each other yeah yeah all just one big happy family thing is he was he was a lot uh uh he was just a lot like more gentle and nice than i thought he was gonna be it was just like i thought he was gonna be like mean or something i don't know why um but he's just like so like uh just helpful and i was just like yeah that's, that's really cool he's very gentle yeah he did. he's cool very dude. soothing voice that's why he does does well on, the, on stream some people are just meant to uh, their voice needs to be heard over a, a broadcast. And people just yep. have that type of voice. Hate yep. it. How they speak. Um, yeah. I mean, I love it. Hey, Illustrator, here we are. We're in Illustrator. I did not expect to be here. But yeah. this is where we are. It's It just it allows some more flexibility sometimes. And so I'm able to just do like more point manipulation. Um, and, and people that, you know, don't mm -hmm. use it, like it's not too different from the design tools that you're used to. Um, Definitely not. Just want to say hi, 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 hi to the chat. People who are new, Marina South. Hey, South Visuals. What a cool name. I love that name. Hi, Gus. Gus is in the chat. Gus is in the chat. Um, 
I just want to say hi to you guys. We're here with Julian Crespo, if you're just joining us. If you're joining us from YouTube, come to Behance. Come on over. We're having a nice little party here. Um, what we're doing right now, Julian is creating a logo for the application that he's designing. So we're in Illustrator. And we're going to come go back into XD at some point. Yeah, yeah we But he's There's building no... all of his different UI elements for this app while and then placing them into his wireframes. So we're in a we're in the true process of building right now. Yeah, we are definitely building something. Yeah, we are definitely building. <laughs> Look at that. Sometimes the shortcuts. I'm using shortcuts from uh, XD, but. Okay, it's it's all right. It's something. It works. So this is a film canister, um, but you know what? The the sometimes on the bottom it's not the uh, the right shape. So let me get this handle. Just pull it down a little bit. Okay, so this is part of the idea, and then what I'm going to do is get this little fella here and copy it, and then bring these handles down. Nice. Bring this. Back down. I love I love coming into I love peeping the other streams because it's a lot of like creation like this. I miss this, right? Mm -hmm. like we just me and you see so much of the same design tools and it's just fun to see. People are like, this is see what's to going be, on. And, yeah. It's supposed to be Adobe XD. Like, what am I doing here? Like, what are you guys what are you doing? doing here? What, am I in the, whose stream yeah. am I in right now? Am I in Paul's stream? It's, um, oh, Paul Trani, he's a man. Oh, right? man, for sure. Legit. He's inspiring. inspiring but all those fellow. other streams are so incredible to watch sometimes because they're so, they're just creating, right? And a lot of the XD streams were like creating, but a lot of thinking that goes on with the, uh, with UX and UI type work. Keep using the same icons, the same uh, shortcuts. Yeah. Um, South asks about the application in general and what it's going to be used for. Oh. Um, so is, yeah. Um, yeah. So the application is going to be a, um, a kind of like an aggregate service uh, that allows uh, anybody that has like a film a shop that maybe has been hurting since the pandemic started uh, to give you like a new way to um, to get your 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 your, uh, your work, your livelihood uh, out in out in the wild, um, you know. So that's kind of like the idea uh, is is just like an aggregated service uh, that connects film enthusiasts with uh, with film developers. So that way you can kind of connect and uh, and and you know work together and invigorate the film industry and keep it alive because um, that's kind of like what, what I've experienced is it's kind of hard to get film developed right now because um, there is pandemics and, you know, small businesses are really hard to keep alive. Uh, so that's kind of, that was the idea it is, is really just, uh, yeah, I don't know, mm -hmm. just kind of yeah. connect, connect it's them. A, yeah, it's a really cool idea for an app and uh, we're seeing it, uh, seeing it unfold. Send back. I'm also well, currently uh, working, you're creating the logo for it, which is awesome. right, right. It's a, a, a different animal in itself. But you know what, I, I like to challenge myself and uh, any way I can is, is really and this is this goes back to like, my idea of like, you know, making yourself stepping outside of your comfort zone, um, um, making yourself like feel like, you know, uncomfortable. Being like that's it's one of the things that I like to I like to say is you got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, Ooh, and love it. And the reason why I say that is, um, it's not working. Right. It is because the like, life's too short to kind of just worry about the things that you can't control. Um, and What's that? and if you What's if you that? put yourselves in these situations, uh, then you know it'll be. It'll be you'll be easier. It'll be easier to get past like certain things in life. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm just gonna take this, and this is done. I'm not gonna do that. That is really cool. Keep it up. That also says the logo is always the heart of something. As if people see a bad logo, then people don't really look at it. Yeah, it's the heart of it, really. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, there's so much um, thought that can go into a design. A are you? There's so much that can go into 
someone who's like a UX designer, or UI designer, creating the service and the product, but marketing, yeah. but the marketing team and how you showcase that, uh, really stylize whatever you're creating. That's really going to make the biggest difference to how it's yep. used and perceived, perceived, honestly. Um, and we can't lie and pretend that's not a big factor. That's a huge factor. And that's what those other streams are for. Um, I think we're just about at time. And All right. we will definitely come back. come back to you. Yep, definitely. Let's see here. Let's go to. All right. We're going to go to. We're going to spotlight an artist. You ready? I'm ready. I'm Let's ready. do it. All righty. Sweet. So right now we are going to spotlight Laura Staneva. I really hope I said your last name right. Um, but Laura is from Copenhagen, Denmark. Ooh, can't wait to travel again. What an amazing place. Um, and we're, right now we're just gonna we're just gonna share her work. So we're on her Behance right now. Again, anybody who's on YouTube, this is what Behance looks like. Uh, but dude, right off the bat, vibes right off the bat, crushing it with whatever with any with all these projects with all of your your main your main image for these projects. I'm interested right away. Yeah. Play that. Uh, so it looks like you've done some kind of... XD work. Oh, awesome. Can you see it, Julian? I'm trying to bring up my screen. It's a little small. Hold okay. on. It's all good. Um, wow, so awesome. Working in AR, working in AR is really something else with XD. I gotta. I just got to see some of this work. Oh, look at that. So it looks like Laura did an AR mirror experience, probably through, yeah, through XD. Yeah. Like that. Look at all the things you can do in XD. And That's it's really dope. great to like think of like how like the extra level of effort to like put something in context, how yeah. much it can make a difference. And that's something Huge that, difference. right? Like if it was just a black or white background without any like um, elements around it in, in, in some real environment, it, it would still look good because it's still a great design. But this takes it to that next level of like, oh, I could picture this in my house. Yes, absolutely. Right. She even went as far as you can tell this this mirror is slightly off. She masked that perfectly. She even like kind of tilted back on the wall a little crooked and she crushed it. Mm -hmm. So we did some AR mirror work. I love it. I love seeing people prototype AR experiences because that's really going to be the future of interface, right? It's not going to be on a screen it's not going to be on a screen period you know the future is it's going to be in your maybe it'll be product maybe it'll be on the wall maybe it'll be maybe it'll come up on your wrist somewhere you know like there yeah. is no limit to the way technology is going to evolve and so that's why i love seeing these these experiences prototype like big ar experiences because it kind of lets me gives me some hope for the future around uh, design this yeah is this cool. is this is really cool um definitely definitely feel the uh the attention to detail that was put into the interactions yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's really it's really interesting how uh you know some of that's the the plants and stuff are kind of floating above just to yeah. kind of give, give you that sense that um there's some recognition uh, of like objects right yes it's really awesome really that really great example great. i love i see toy faces being used on that one too i mm -hmm. love that one an ar biking i love that you I love that Laura showcased all of her AR work in the same case study. This right. XD, it's so great. Just biking, kind of biking map situation. Maybe it's something that comes up while you're when you're biking. Yeah, and, and this context. is so when I talked about like uh, you know what what you need to do uh, to prepare yourself to be a product designer is a lot of times is understand this technology, right? And yeah. uh, what are the uh, you know what are the limits of what we can design is what is available in terms of tech and, and the medium that you're presenting it on. And so Great. AR is going to be where, you know, it's not going to be uh, the same type of experience that people are used to with screens. Um, and it's just really cool that to see people thinking about this now. And Adobe XD also gives you this ability to do 3D translate. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not doing that in any of my work um, on this stream, uh, but I love that feature as something that, it's a cool um, feature. yeah, it gives you more flexibility because people use that angle uh, plugin yeah. just to kind of tilt their images just for um, the, the cool graphical um, component. But to be able to 
um, actually have that in a in a, in a interaction mm -hmm. uh, using auto animate is awesome. And yeah, I, I was really blown really, away. This is an incredible like uh, experience through a museum. Yeah, I'm just like I'm like that needs to happen now. That needs to exist. So this is the her, her AR work. Awesome! What a great example of how to prototype. Prototyping in context, prototyping high fidelity looking yeah. experiences. That, like, I can fully believe that. I can I can feel the story through what you've created there. Let's keep going so we can just kind of keep hyping up the work. Is there anything you want to look at specifically, Julian? No, but I just want to again like appreciate the AR experience because it's like she yeah. like she didn't couldn't couldn't decide which one she wanted to do. She's like, I'm just gonna do a <laughs> bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> They're um, very experiments. Look. She said she labels them as experiments, which, yes, that's exactly what we need. We need to, I love being, I love that you're showcasing them as, ex, I'm experimenting. Why not? Let's, uh, go let's ahead, do, Julie. let's do the hundred, the hundred UI yeah. designs. Okay, like right off the bat, hundred UI designs tells me you are serious, girl. Like yeah. you are here for the long haul and I feel it through this. Here we go. Yeah. So she's doing like just two key screens, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Let's see. We can read this. Yeah. Oh, I love kind of your learning objectives here. That's cool. Yes. That's sweet. Really having an understanding of what you're doing and what you're trying to hone. That's, that's great having kind of a, an overhead view of what you're doing. Podcast app. It's really cool. That's Let's good. See how these evolve. Great. I love the little illustrations. You just kind of get some stuff. Yes. We got to still do that. Everyone can do just every day, just a little practice every day. We need to do this. We all need to do this. Yeah. I love this. Like one of these blocks is just a, a video. That's a cool mock up. Ooh, a toggle. Let's see this toggle. Ooh, beautiful. Nice. Little Showcase night shift. Those micro, those little micro interactions you can do. I love that. That's pretty. That is so pretty. I could stare at that all day. Mm. This is cool. I was looking at this earlier. Yeah. I don't have a smartwatch, but this is what I would want my, I have how one. I'd want it to be showcased. I have a smartwatch and I, it doesn't look like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. cool. It's a cool way to showcase things. Let's see. Keep going. Book reading. Oh, you know, crushing it. Yeah, totally. These are you. You not only are you're serious and you're you're serious and you're dedicated to your craft. I can we mm -hmm. can see that. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where like you know the appreciation of the work is just such a high level. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think she should be like critiquing my work. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, this is why we're spotlighting her. You know, yep. someone deserve this. You need Laura. You are totally deserving. This is incredible. What an yep. amazing, amazing portfolio so far. You yeah, do you need a job. To, do you need I a would, job? I would love to see her, <laughs> um, her, her like portfolio, her real portfolio. Yeah. Well, let's see. There's. Let's check out this last uh, case study, which. I'm always a big fan of anybody who can really showcase um, a full um, case study around a, a specifically UX case study. I feel like that's the main thing when junior designers or designers are asking who are just getting started how to showcase their work. I love being able to point out someone who's done it well. And this is definitely done well. So, yeah, look at that. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of attention to detail. The craft is there. It doesn't um, doesn't feel like, you know, it's it's something that's just copied some from somewhere. Like, yeah. you know, it it feels like it feels like a really really uh, thoughtful uh, presentation here. This is great. Really appreciate. It. Yeah, and it looks like yeah. So in terms of your portfolio on Behance, you really utilized all of the different ways that Behance can work for you. It looks like this is kind of like a main main showcase of work versus having like a portfolio up which is great and you can also find her on twitter and uh, dribble linkedin instagram these are great to have your socials up on this exploring illustrator that's cool i'm wondering about these i want to check these out 
Are these just explorative images? Oh, nice. She's a photographer. Julian. There oh, you go. nice. Beautiful. The magazine. This is awesome. Okay. So you've definitely come a long way with your your design. So keep at it. Keep at it with XD. You're really testing the boundaries of it. I think I think only good things to come for you. Honestly. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure like she's already killing it wherever she's wherever she's at. if she's looking for new opportunities, then you know give us a ring. <laughs> yeah, definitely, visual visual design is is up there. Look, there's a star there. there. Look, it's made yeah, to happen. It's, it's made. exactly. <laughs> Is a experimentation on with illustrations, exploring. Awesome! Oh my gosh. Yeah. Very cool. Love it. Custom patterns. Repeated, repetitive patterns. That's awesome. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, that is Laura, and I am so glad we had time to check out her her work. And if anybody else is uh, you think that needs to be spot under the spotlight, spotlit. Spotlight. Please check out the artist spotlight tab of up above the chat, um, and you too can be showcased. Uh, Laura's in the chat now. Hey, Laura, what's up? Steve told us uh, she's still working <laughs> on the real website. Honestly, it looks great. Keep it up. Really impressed by your work. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're back with Julian. Julian, what? How's it going? It's going well. Um, all right, so let's let's hop in this because we don't have much time. Um, so what we're going to do here is, and you can all see my screen, right? Yeah. Awesome. That would be a tragedy if you couldn't. Uh, so that's my logo. I don't know. It's it's a first iteration. Uh, so we're going to roll with it. And we're going to go with uh, a font that I like. It's called Franklin. I'm going to go all caps and call it a day. Um, but let's, let's go bold. and then italicize, and then make it 18, and then reduce. There you go. That's the vibe. Yeah. This like retro, retro 80s, or like mid 90s. Yeah. Look at that, it's something. There you go. Let's just roll with that. Roll with that, that, is, that is my logo. Okay, so moving on, let's assemble. We have all, right. all our components here, and now we have to make some screens. So let's do it. Um, so I have my wireframes that I'm uh, referring to over here. And so let's just kind of like pull this over and just do one screen at a time. Like that. Oh, I didn't do a map pin, but whatever. I'll just use this one. This is going to happen in real time very quickly. Everybody. Yeah, should be, should be quick. Everybody. Uh, William, Senna's in the chat saying hi. Senna, Senna's there for real? <laughs> oh yeah, you're missing. It's a, it's a no. Adobe fam party. I am missing it. You know, and I typically would have um, everything open, except uh, it's just too much right now. Oh, no, <laughs> like yeah, I can't do that. Um, this is going to be too thin. So let me see. Can I add an outline to it? Yeah. Can I add an outline? Can I add 0.5? It won't. It won't match if uh, if I leave it as is. Okay. So we know that we want to have a map pin, and we want to have um, our text to be here. And I'm going to say it's location based. So I want to make sure to have that. And I'm going to change this to my. Textiles uh, is going to be mm -hmm. small, All right? And so I'm using the same font. Click that. There you go. Center that. Just reminding us that you're not in the bay anymore with that, Austin. Yeah, just a reminder. You know, just a reminder. Subtle. You subtle. You you left us. All good. I did. Um, for, for you know, for 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 good things. For space for wide open spaces. Come on. Yeah, exactly. It's all good. We get it. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the. Oh, I didn't do the profile guy. Here he is. I forgot to do this one. Fresh it, fresh it, Julian. So 
one's going to be 1.5. All right, so let's put this like, kind of like right there. So let's see. Yeah. Then what we're going to do now is these little nearby offers. So we'll just to take this over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, we were talking yesterday in the chat, or we were just talking in general with everyone about how if people are still, or if people are, are are shooting with film, and I think it's this big, yeah. so just like people are listening to vinyl, you know, it's really come back, and that really was a big inspiration on making this app for you, and it was that you need a place to get your film developed, or you're trying to figure out and kind of link up novices with people who have been established in this type of business for a while mm -hmm. and it's all coming back right so that yeah. is that is kind of like the cool thing about it is um you know like we've we've already talked about like how film is is kind of i mean people already know film is like not necessarily uh you know alive and well like it, it's kind of one of those things where yeah it's kind mm -hmm. of a dying thing and and maybe you know that's just kind of the nature of like old technology like records and things like that yeah is is you know we we definitely have like a lot of things to consider about like what is what is the medium that we're going to be using so mm -hmm. you know that's kind of like what i was thinking too is just like how can we uh, come up with a cool concept that is um you know paying homage um to to a, to a time you know to a time and, and an experience because it is an experience in itself right Yes, it is. It so is an I, experience. Oh, so I'm just it. hopping in here. Yeah. Oh, broke it. I broke it. So you grabbed that from Adobe Stock? Um, yeah, this I pack. grabbed this from Stock. And I'm just cool. going to put them in here for now. Um, and this is locked, so let me unlock it. Let me just copy it, actually. Nice. And that's the beauty of working within Adobe Tools. It's so super easy transition between uh between tools um it's almost like they designed it that way or something yeah you think um that? you would think let's see we have one last question coming in as we you know we just as we're letting you do your thing something for us to pine over be cre be creative digital design quotation daphne so thank you for that um Asked, I believe you said you started out in design and then your career just, and then in your career decided to go to design school. Did that make a difference in your career? What made you decide to go to school? So I, I mean, so, sign over that, or, you know, I can help answer it if you want to just sure. like design. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could take it. Yeah. yeah I think so your reason is similar to mine. Actually. Very similar. Very similar. I think that's why we, we definitely, we gel from the beginning. Um, so we're going to let Julian just keep going because he's, he's a race for the finish and we're going to use every, Every second we have. Every second. Every second, absolutely. <laughs> I'm here for it. We don't know. Uh, this is a once in a lifetime thing, me and Julian getting on a stream together. Um, we both, yeah, as the, me and Julian met in art school, in design school, art school, whatever you want to call it. Um, and yet the question is, did it make a difference in our career? What made us decide to go? We both, we both were coming from places in our lives where we had figured out something about ourselves and what we wanted out of our careers, having experienced other careers. And um, I think what it came down to is for me, I didn't get to go, I didn't go straight into college right out of, right out of high school. I, I, I took a different path and, and so did Julian essentially. He kind of popped around and did a lot of different things. And we both really wanted that a formal education and be able to in, we wanted to invest in a formal education around something and it took us a while to figure out what that thing was um eventually we we came into design and creativity in a creative space and uh, found a school that had those services ready for us and had those majors ready for us um so if that was our reason right like we wanted that formal education not everybody wants that it. formal education. We needed it. We wanted it. You know, we we could have learned on yeah. our own, and like, but I think so, we wanted it because it formed a community for us. I don't know. We, I, yeah, I, I don't know if that's true though, because like I, for me personally, you like, didn't want. I, you didn't need. I needed it. Like I needed. You needed uh, it. 
I, yeah, definitely needed guidance. Um, for me, oh. like if I don't have um, some sort you of- You need a rule book. Yeah, or just, I think what it is, is I need to actually like pay to, to mm. have myself put in that position like I, that was yeah. just me like I'm not finding anything uh, amazing here um, and, and that's yeah that's another reason I mean wanted in terms of wanted to have somebody to hold us accountable wanted to have accountability uh, that's it accountability a community of create I want I wanted to be around a community of creatives Julia needed accountability in a form of probably a surrounding number of creatives and teachers and staff to kind of keep people on track so that's why we went. Obviously, a lot of people don't thrive in a situation like that. Maybe you do, do learn better on their own. So, you know, yeah. teach their own deciding to go back to school. Did it help? Yeah, actually it did. But oh. not for the reasons you think, you know what I mean? Like it's, did it, Julian, what do you think? Did it help make a difference in your career? I mean, I wouldn't have a career if I didn't go back to school, I think. Oh, like it really did it prepare me um, just then that, and this is me, like there's a lot of, and I think UX and, 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 and design is, is one of those fields where you still can technically get yeah. by without, um, Absolutely. without, without needing a degree. Um, but I, I don't think that me personally, I would have been able to, uh, excel the way I, 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 I think, I hope I am. Um, right. And like, yeah. you know, designing, the, you know, maybe this isn't like exactly like how I would design an app in my real uh, my real job um, this is like a first pass idea um, and you know that's something that like we have to you know practice and keep keep going um, but like yeah it's it's one of those it's one of those things where like I needed to like actually pay for that 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 experience and and yeah. that's that's where I ended up you know yeah that's, and it makes I think it makes a difference in different ways and obviously like I said each their own in terms of how they want to learn maybe some people are maybe this is college this adobe live streams are to people's versions of uh, formal yeah. design education which is why we love coming on here and kind of sharing whatever knowledge we have because we we believe in the community uh, the group thing right as mm -hmm. designers did it make it i and for like i said the did going to a formal 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 establishment for a design career help yeah for us but not but only because it formed us formed formed a community it like literally formed our friendships and bonds and you know remember a lot of work in tech and design is and creative work is a lot of who you know and who you've worked with before and so we were able to leave our our education and and i knew i knew julian i because i he had projects in front of me and from when we started so it was really easy to find a community in that yeah okay julian i know it's come, we're coming deadline. to the end here i know and i'm not here. i'm not here's, I'm here's not your there. constraint <laughs> this is definitely two hours to design an app to do visual design for an app is a uh, a uh, little harder than, uh, than i wanted it to be i think but, you know. and i think but i think that's good and i i would love it you know i think i think you're showing us the true process so if you could if you could kind of summarize what you've done in the yeah. past few days. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes, and sometimes you get to points where, you know, you don't necessarily finish, and that's okay. Um, this one is not done, um, but that's okay, and I'm going to have to live with that. Um, so let's let's go ahead and look at what I've done. Um, I did a bunch of cool wireframes and understood the problem. I'm going to keep working on this and see how it goes, and, um, you know, this will be a challenge for me in my own time to put this up on Behance after I'm done. Um, so I didn't get to the color palette and that's okay because color for me isn't as important as it is to others. I will, I like yellow. So I think maybe I'll throw yellow in there with black and white. Um, but what I did uh, was that what I was able to accomplish was, um, you know, defining my typography, defining my iconography, uh, yeah. you know, coming up with a logo, um, doing, uh, some, some buttons and some radios and some things that are required for this experience, but didn't get to actually put them in. Okay. Rating system, stars, um, we have that, we have drop downs, we have uh, these things, we have uh, search. So like we have, we have all the components we need. I probably need like 30 more minutes and then actually probably like <laughs> an hour at least. And then I'm, 
I think what I, I actually saw some really cool iconography for um, these icons, and then I couldn't find mm -hmm. them. So I will have okay. to uh, uh, find those illustrations and uh, put them in and then share them on Behance. And uh, everybody that, uh, that watched the broadcast, hopefully will come back and peek at them. Um, yeah. But yeah, we are out of time and I didn't get to finish. And um, it's, all, you know, it's all good. He will. And you know it. And here's the beauty of the internet is that people can find you and ask yeah. you questions even after the stream is long gone. So if anybody needs to ask and see what happens to this project, come back to Behance, check out Julian's por uh, portfolio, uh, check him out on his socials. Um, thank you again for joining us. Yep. Uh, my name is Alexis Bruce. This is Julian I'm Julian Crespo. Crespo. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> Nathaniel Dodson will be on photo editing live tomorrow and check out the DCC after this. So you guys, this has been great. Julian, this has been awesome. Yeah, I had a great time. See you later. I'll see you later. Bye.